In this video we will have a look at provisioning devices using DNA Center. So we will have a look at the provision tab within Cisco DNA Center, what it's there for and what it does. The provision tab is used for device deployment and software image management. So when you go on the provision page you can see all the devices managed by DNA Center. To give you an example of the benefits of the provision tab, in a traditional world an engineer who needs to configure and install a device will typically get a device shipped to the head office, then they would need to configure the device, and once the device is configured they would need to upgrade the device, they would then box the device back up and ship it to where it needs to go, probably a branch office. Once the device is at the branch office, someone else will plug it in and connect it to the network. The provision section was designed to do all of this in a much more simplified and automated way, which we will cover off now. So the new way within DNA Center provisioning, the product can be shipped out directly to the final location. So the vendor will ship it out to the final location. Someone else will plug it in and then the device will automatically phone home and connect back to DNA Center. And it will download its configuration that has been pre-configured in DNA Center. It can then upgrade itself to the correct software image and it's ready for live production use. So this is very much plug and play which saves hours of installation time. Plug and play is actually a feature which I will uh, cover off in a few slides. So the provision tab can automatically push things down to devices. It can configure all switches, routers, wireless devices, automate changes and more. Additionally, the StealthWatch security analytics platform can integrate with DNA Center as well, which can provision network elements to send NetFlow and encrypted traffic analytics back to StealthWatch. The next slide we will have a look at supported devices. If you type Cisco DNA Center supported devices into Google, you can find the DNA Center page to list the current supported devices. Here we have Cisco routers, Cisco Catalyst and Nexus switches, Cisco wireless access points and controllers, AC with firepower devices, Palo Alto firewalls, Fortinet firewalls and other third party devices. I'm sure the list will uh, keep uh, growing as uh, time moves on. Device inventory and swim. SWIM stands for Software Image Management. Um, without software image management, usually in a traditional world to upgrade a device, it can typically involve planning the steps involved to upgrade the device, uh, peer reviewing the implementation plan by someone else, scheduling the change, so you can um, schedule the change in for a particular time, lining up pre and post change testers, application testers, to ensure that the device has uh, successfully been um, upgraded and the applications are still working through the device. Planning physical access to the DC as a backup in case something goes wrong amongst other bits and pieces. So to overcome all of these steps and to streamline it, DNA Center comes with a feature called Software Image Management. And Software Image Management enables us to streamline upgrading of the device images. That can usually take a lot of time in a traditional environment as just mentioned. So you can mark an image as golden which basically means the image you want your devices to be on and you're happy with and after that you can verify which devices need upgrading to that validated image you've marked which meets your compliance requirements. Before DNA Center rolls out an upgrade it will carry out all of the upgrade checks and the picture on the screen in front is called an upgrade readiness check document. Uh, these are basically all the pre-checks done on the device and it will provide feedback such as checking the memory, checking the hard drive space and so on. So it would do all of the checks for you that you would usually have to manually do before upgrading the device and then it, once it's happy with all the checks it will upgrade the device and once the device is upgraded it will do post checks as well to make sure the device is happy and feed it all back to you. Plug and play. So we've already spoken about plug and play but it's worth mentioning again. So Cisco DNA Center provides the plug and play provisioning process which supports automatically and remotely onboarding and provisioning new network devices even when these network devices are not yet captured in the Cisco DNA Center inventory which is the whole point of plug and play. Once a configuration template is created for the device and the device is plugged into the network an agent on the device connects back to the Cisco DNA Center and downloads the required software and device configuration. You can also integrate this with change control so you can schedule this for a certain change window for example 
and the upgrade readiness check which we just looked at can confirm if the change has been approved or not finally after upgrading the device it will do all the post checks and feed this information back to you as well so the screenshot in front of you shows devices that have been provisioned through plug and play so these are devices that have been connected to the network they've uh, phoned back to DNA Center configured themselves, upgraded themselves and they are ready for live production use. Finally the last page we will have a look at adding devices to DNA Center. So the different ways to add a device to DNA Center are plug and play which we have just spoken about where DNA Center is already configured with the device config and the device phones home once it's plugged into the network and downloads its configuration and software image. Then you can do this manually where you add the device and the device settings into the inventory you can do this through discovery you can discover the device using the discovery tools such as CDP or use IP address ranges to discover the devices you can do a bulk import so you can import a bulk of devices using the CSV file format and finally the last method is you can also migrate the devices from Cisco Prime infrastructure if you are currently using Cisco Prime that's it for this video and thanks for watching